in this video, we take you to look at Schindler Smart, Schindler's second wacky design of lift. Schindler's first wacky design of lift was the Schindler Direct Drive, which was invented for the millennium, with that millennium fever, ultra futuristic era where everyone thought the future was coming and I had to make everything overly futuristic. The Schindler Direct Drive was a failure because it was so weird. It was the world's first ever design of Destination Dispatch. But Destination Dispatch for a set of one lift made no sense. Plus, back then, no one had ever seen a Destination Dispatch before and most of the passengers had no idea how to operate the lift. Then the lift was driven by a motor attached underneath the lift car, which drove the lift up the lift shaft like a climbing lift. It was such a weird design and was only installed for one year until they decided that this design didn't work. But Schindler was still intent on keeping that millennium fever going. So rather than abandoning the over futuristic designs of the millennium, they attempted a second design, the Schindler Smart. Now this was slightly toned down as the buttons were no longer a keypad destination dispatch outside, they moved the keypad inside, meaning the Schindler Smart is the world's first keypad floor select lift. It was a very, very bizarre lift. There was two variants of it. The first version, which had capacitive buttons, very interesting, and the second version, where the capacitive buttons were replaced by a slightly M-series looking button, is a very weird design of lift. Let's start this video off by taking a ride in it. This is a really rare model. How many floors do you think it goes up? Not six. Probably three at most. Third floor. Third floor. And now, let's take a look at the motor. Why is it Schindler Smart and Arona Worm Drive make such an interesting sound? Why is it Arona copied Schindler's design of motor? It is very weird. Now, the reason why these make up really odd loud gearbox sound, considering that gearbox sound is so you don't really hear much on lifts. These lifts use an overly wormy worm drive motor. Now, all geared lifts, meaning a geared lift with a motor is in the motor room, use a worm drive motor because the motor sits at a 90 degree angle to the lift's main wheel that the cables go round. And that mechanism that gears the motor to that main wheel, which is at a perpendicular angle to the motor, is called a worm drive. The thing is, with geared lifts where the motor is in the motor room, the gearbox is usually quite large and doesn't have that high a gear ratio, so you don't really get a wormy effect of the worm drive. But with a roll of worm drives and Schindler Smarts, the gearbox seems to be really small and compacted, and it seems to have a really high gear ratio with the motor running really fast, especially since it's a 1 to 1 MRL, when most MRLs are 2 to 1. And because of how compact that worm gear is and how that rubs against the main gear cog, you get that real sort of classic worm drive sound to it. Now, another interesting thing about the Schindler Smart is it was discontinued a few years after it first came out, which is quite typical of these overly futuristic designs. Because overly futuristic things might seem like a good idea when they're invented, but usually companies then want to be more cost effective and they find out that people don't really like the overly futuristic features of these lifts. A very similar story, in fact, to the Fissenkrupp lift with the unfortunate name of ISIS. But that story is for another day. With the Schindler Smart, after it was discontinued, a few years later, Arona then invented their design of MRL, which was almost an exact copy of the Schindler Smart, minus the keypad full select system. It also had overly wormy worm drive motor on a one-to-one -one system compared that then MRLs had taken off a lot more and no one used one-to-one. -one. So I don't know why Arona wanted to copy the Schindler Smart design. Very weird. Anyway, as for this video, let's now surf the Schindler Smart.
Another thing worth mentioning about the Schindler Smart and Arona worm drives is these are one-to-one -one MRLs. These one-to-one -one MRLs have a side chassis. Sadly, it doesn't have a full chassis, so you don't see supported metal girders the whole way around the lift car, which would be nice to have seen. But they do have a fairly well-built side chassis, which is a chassis down the side of the lift where the lift's being pulled. And let's now take a look in the logic cabinet. And this logic doesn't seem to have any way of interacting with it. That's because it doesn't. From what I've heard, you interact with the logic through the keypad system, which is inside of the lift. That must be a bloody nightmare to maintain. All of the fault codes are shown on the indicator inside the lift. So let's say the lift's stalled for whatever reason. The engineer comes out to the lift. They then have to free fall the lift to the top of the shaft and go inside the lift to see what the fault code is. But with that said, surely the free falling of the lift could possibly generate another fault code? That must add to the difficulty of finding out what the fault code was which actually stalled the lift. And now let's go to the building next door, which also has a Schindler Smart. Sadly, on this one, the classic Schindler Smart light has been replaced with some modern LED lights, which loses the character of the lift. But anyway, let's now ride it. The no six. That bulb's admirable, it's like blue. Doesn't it have a bulb there on this one? How strange. It does, but I bet it's blue when we moved it. Yeah, that doesn't fit. <laughs> huh? What voice is that? That Piccadilly line. And let's open up the logic cabinet and let's demonstrate free falling a lift. Schindler Smarts have a direct bike cable from the logic cabinet to the motor brake so you can physically release the brake, which is something I very much approve of because other designs of lift. Cough, cough, Otis Gen 2 have electronic brake release, and if ever that electronic brake release fails, you're screwed. All MRL should have a physical way of releasing a brake, and it disgusts me that some models of lift don't. At least the Schindler Smart does have a physical way of releasing a brake. So let's now demonstrate free falling a lift. I don't understand this, it's so weird. I'm trying to think, what the fuck's a brake release? What is it? It's a brake release? Why is it on like a window? Oh, I don't know, it's a little... Oh, shall we try it? Shall we send it down floor? Try it. There's on the cables going to most of the lap like that. I should do it, so pump pull that down. There it goes. Stop. Stop. And let's finish this video off with surfing it. Uh, dangle there but I'm out in the way, dangle there but it's unsafe. Dangle but I've got nah. Uh, I wanted to dangle it but there's no good dangle spots. I really wanted to do a lift shaft dangle of this Schindler spot. Sadly the top beam is to the side of the lift. Meaning I wasn't able to dangle it. I could have hanged off that top beam, but I would have been banging into a motor. That wouldn't have been safe. Very disappointing. Thank you.